Everybody has seen images of the solar system in textbooks, where the Sun is just marginally bigger than Jupiter. However, that isn't an accurate representation of the scales, the Sun is so big that roughly 1,000 Jupiters could fit inside. Despite its grandeur, the Sun is not the largest star in the cosmos or even our galaxy. Our star is like a little pebble in comparison to UI Scuti, which holds that honor. However, there's more. Even more astounding is what scientists have discovered, an ancient star that is mysterious and contains a black hole. This astronomical enigma confounds scientists and may hold the key to understanding how the universe came to be as it is now. However, how is a black hole able to reside inside a star? What made these stars so massive? And in the event that a black hole star strayed into our solar system, what would happen? Logo, similar to cosmic blacksmiths are stars. Most of the elements we see in the cosmos are being formed in their blazing cores. However, the stars that might have been in the early cosmos were not like this. They had black holes inside of them rather than regular star cores, which allowed them to expand to previously unthinkable sizes. As gravity causes the densest areas of the gas and dust clouds to collapse, ordinary stars are created. A protostar, an early stage in the formation of a star, is created when the mass of material that results warms up. Eventually, enough material from the surrounding rotating disk of gas is gathered by the newly created hot core, forming a main sequence star that begins to generate energy through nuclear fusion. Our Sun took roughly 50 million years to enter this phase. Most stars will be main sequence stars for the majority of their lives. However, if their mass is insufficient, they will all eventually either become white dwarfs or explode as supernovae. The trajectory that a supernova takes after exploding determines whether it becomes a neutron star or a black hole. In approximately 5 billion years, when our sun runs out of hydrogen, it will become a red giant, becoming 200 times larger than it is now, and eventually losing its outer layers to become a white dwarf, a celestial body nearly 200,000 times denser than Earth, but roughly the same size. After gradually cooling to roughly 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, 10 million degrees Celsius, this dense spherical material will crystallize into the white dwarf sun in roughly 10 billion years. In the case of the sun, carbon and oxygen will solidify through a process akin to that of water turning into ice, but with a different substance. And the destiny of stars with masses greater than 10 times that of the sun will differ. They don't have the mass to become black holes, but they are large enough for their cores to collapse during a supernova. What does this mean for them now? The intense pressure found deep within these stars squeezes each proton and electron so firmly that they combine to generate neutrons. Since neutrons are incapable of being compressed any farther, they oppose the force of gravity, allowing the star to achieve a new equilibrium. Other than black holes, neutron stars are the densest objects in the universe. They have the same mass as the Sun, even though they are only a little city, about 12 miles 20 kilometers, in size. A sugar cube-sized piece of neutron star material might weigh up to 1 billion tons, or nearly as much, on Earth. However, how do stars become black holes? The nuclear fusion process and the strong gravity produced by the star's own mass attempting to squash it collide while the star is still active. Similar to the planned destruction of a concrete building, the star collapses in on itself when there is no longer any fuel to support nuclear fusion and no force to oppose gravity. According to Einstein, everything that is crushed within a specific radius and has enough mass may turn into a black hole. Throughout their existence, black holes continue to develop and eat anything that approaches them too closely. This causes the black hole to eat even more nearby material as it approaches the point where the gravitational attraction becomes so strong that nothing can escape. It resembles the Earth sinking as a result of subterranean buildings collapsing. Despite being a gravitational sinkhole with black holes, it accelerates gradually as its event horizon widens. Black holes often have a maximum rate of expansion. This phenomenon is attributed to the Eddington luminosity limit. In essence, it's the point at which matter can no longer enter a black hole more quickly than it already can. Small holes in an automobile tire would allow some of the extra air to escape due to the increased pressure inside. Rotating black holes in space have comparable effects. Matter spirals faster and faster in the direction of a black hole. This allows for the conversion of roughly 42% of this stuff into energy. Because of how strong this radiation is, 
part of the entering material may be pushed away, just like air is pushed away from a car tire. Because of how effective this process is, the radiation released outweighs the energy produced by nuclear fusion in stars. Imagine a time in the future when we manage to capture this energy and put it to use for our own needs. This limit applies even to supermassive black holes with a vast surface area that is capable of attracting matter. Supermassive black holes, which form the core of nearly every galaxy, have been shown to be considerably larger than previously believed. One of astronomy's biggest mysteries is that their massive magnitude is not explained by the slow accretion of matter over the universe's age. However, there is something that could solve the puzzle. Even the biggest black holes that have been found so far are dwarfed by black hole stars, or quasi-stars, which must have been the largest celestial bodies in history. Black hole stars cannot develop in the current conditions of the universe, yet near the beginning of time, space was filled with enormous clouds of gas. Because there was so much more material in these densely populated areas of space, it piled up and collapsed in on itself, creating newborn stars with remarkable mass. Though it's possible that they came from unseen, spherical dark matter areas called dark matter halos, which can contain up to 100 million solar masses and be the source of thousands of enormous stars, large stars would often go supernova and leave behind enormous black holes. However, the size of these celestial giants was so great that they were able to absorb the explosive power that would have otherwise propelled the star's outer layers into space. Rather, the outer layers of these old stars remained intact, and they only underwent implosions, which turned their stellar centers into small black holes. You wouldn't even detect any changes in the star if you could somehow witness this occurrence up close. A newborn black hole has now begun to consume the quasar star from the inside out. The black hole is now very small, but it is spinning, which causes a disk of heated material to surround it at a speed that is almost equal to light. It can also consume gas infinitely quickly since the star's pressure pushes gas directly into the black hole. The accretion disk's friction heats up more and more, releasing massive amounts of radiation and giving the host star the appearance of a little galaxy. If they existed, quasi-stars would have expanded more quickly than any known black hole. Some of these, like Stevenson 2-18, UI Scuti, and TON618, would eventually surpass the greatest stars and black holes known to science in size in a matter of millions of years. How big is that, exactly? Thousands of times bigger than the Sun, perhaps even as big as the solar system's diameter, and perhaps bigger. However, its enormous bulk and girth also present issues. The lifespan of quasi-stars decreases with increasing size. With over 6 billion years left in its life, our Sun has been around for more than 4 billion years. Black hole stars, on the other hand, only lasted a few million years before they suddenly and violently burst into an unparalleled explosion, unleashing a huge black hole that was always on the lookout for more material to devour. However, what if a star such as this happened to stray into our quiet neighborhood in space? A pseudostar's gravitational pull would cause planets and other celestial bodies to deviate from their planned orbits if it entered the solar system. There would be complete anarchy throughout the hitherto ordered planetary system, and Earth would be hit hard by asteroids. The consequences would begin prior to the pseudostar fully entering our solar system. Our world would already be experiencing a spike in warmth and brightness as the massive star eats the outer planets and other celestial bodies, making the surface inhospitable until, in the end, it would devour the Earth as well, but life on Earth would have long since vanished by then. The supermassive black holes that are currently at the centers of galaxies may have formed from seeds found in the central black holes of quasi-stars. They may have even had a more significant impact. The formation of galactic structures and the distribution of stars within galaxies may have been influenced by gravitational waves, which could be produced by the dynamic processes linked to quasi-stars, such as the interaction between the surrounding matter and the central black hole's collapse. Not only that, but astrobiology may also be affected by quasi-stars. The extreme radiation emitted by these objects may have had unanticipated effects on the habitability of planets nearby, modifying the environment conducive to life. Nevertheless, quasi-stars may have predetermined the course of cosmic history by reshaping the early universe in ways that were unimaginable. Here's another astounding idea for you, though. Even though our universe is most likely devoid of quasi-stars today, there may still be microscopic black holes from the early ages that have the mass of an asteroid. If there were a lot of these black holes, 
theoretical physicists surmise that they may be traveling through space and occasionally becoming ensnared in gas clouds. Primordial black holes would eventually make their way into the centers of those newly formed stars when they were born. Within a few hundred million years, even black holes with Pluto's mass would see massive growth, this is a comparatively brief time span in a star's lifetime. According to a suggestion made by the late great Stephen Hawking, even our sun could have one. We wouldn't even notice it if it concealed a black hole roughly the size of Mercury. Even still, it's quite unlikely. However, there is one technique that researchers believe could be useful in locating these cosmic storage units for early black holes. The so-called Hawking stars would last far longer, to start. Additionally, Hawking stars grow into red giants in order to cool off, our sun will do the same as it matures. However, red giants would be somewhat colder than usual if they included a tiny black hole. Approximately 500 red giant stars that are unusually cool have already been found. Scientists intend to study the star's distinctive pulsating vibrations, which may indicate that they are not your typical red giants, in order to determine whether or not these stars contain primordial black holes. Here's another crazy idea for you, some people think that the enigmatic dark matter that permeates the universe is actually a swarm of tiny, infinitely old black holes. Therefore, even though it is incredibly unlikely, some black holes of that kind would get captured by a star if there were an infinite number of them. We'll have to wait until scientists have a better understanding of that. But that's all the time we have right now. Keep checking back for more amazing discoveries and exciting cosmic riddles. We read all of the comments, so please share your thoughts about the mysterious quasi-stars below. Thank you for watching.